If I'm right, you have already 6 million hits for your internet videos. Have there been efforts to silence you, even physically, or to ban you from the internet, outside the recent ban on YouTube? Actually, the videos have had more than 20 million hits. More demands from Islam has been seen more than 5 million times on .sub alone. I've had hundreds of death threats by email and I've posted some of them on my website, but people who have recognized me in the street have been very warm and supportive. Nobody has tried to ban me from the internet. Who were behind the proposed ban of your videos on YouTube? Religious organizations in Britain or Islamic regimes in the Middle East like Iran or Saudi Arabia. Welcome to Saudi Britain was removed after a flagging campaign by Islamic activists, but it backfired because hundreds of YouTube users uploaded it to their own accounts in protest and spread it all over the site like a rash. Then the National Secular Society and Professor Dawkins got involved, and the press picked up the story, whereupon YouTube backed down and reinstated it. I have no evidence that any religious organizations were involved. YouTube briefly removed another of my videos godless and free, but they emailed me to explain that it had been done in error. You started a petition against Sharia courts in Britain. What are the results so far? And why did you pick especially this subject among so many others for a campaign? I didn't start the petition. I only signed it and helped to publicize it. Why this subject? Because Sharia justice deals in crooked measures that are weighted against women in clear violation of their basic human rights. Isn't that a good enough reason? The fact that it's the thin end of a theocratic wedge is another reason point the original petition was restricted to people in Britain, but now there's a global petition that anyone in the world can sign. Already it has many thousands of signatures, and I urge everyone who is concerned about the growing Islamization of Europe and the free world to add their name. Do you have any support among the mass media for his anti-Sharia campaign? It seems the BBC doesn't allow so much criticism on religion. Is it still possible to criticize or make jokes about Islam? No, the BBC is utterly spineless. Whenever I've worked for them as a comedian I've found it almost impossible to make jokes about religion or to say anything at all about Islam. That's why I started making videos. Who are to blame for allowing Sharia courts? Is it the Labour government or the churches, or both? Where are the liberals and conservatives in this? It's Labour's sop to the imams. The conservatives have promised to abolish them, the courts, not the imams, although some of them should be banned as well. The Labour Party is a party of multiculturalism in the UK, though lately they've backtracked on some of the diversity rhetoric, because it's beginning to dawn on them what a disaster it's been. But they depend heavily on the Muslim vote, and they'll do anything to get it, even sinking so low as to install a buffoon like Nazar Ahmed in the House of Lords. Some people will say, what have you against Sharia courts? If people go there from their own free choice or religious convictions? What free choice? Many women will be coerced into using these courts and everybody knows it. Their basic premise violates fundamental civilized values, and there is absolutely no excuse for allowing them. Would we tolerate a legal code where people of a certain color are treated unequally, and their word is worth half that of someone of another color? Then why the double standards when it comes to women? Why do we still tacitly condone the idea that women are inferior? What on earth is wrong with us? What went wrong with labor? How is it possible that people like Lord Ahmed are in their ranks? Why is a movement that in history tried to emancipate the working people from oppression by the church and the clergy nowadays helping the oppression by the mosque and the clergy? The Labour Party was established to emancipate ordinary people from economic hardship, but nowadays it's dominated by a political class, a quasi-aristocracy preoccupied with imposing their own enlightened values on society against the will of the people, and consolidating their own power. In other words, the same kind of people who run your country and most of Western Europe. Since this Labour government has been in office we've seen a more rapid erosion of our basic civil liberties than at any time in our history. So much for emancipation. Why do you think the Christian churches are treating Islam as their ally, while Christians are oppressed all over in the Muslim world? The two fascist dogmas have a common enemy in secularism, which they rightly see as a threat. That's why the Archbishop of Canterbury disgraced himself last year by advocating Sharia law in Britain, and it's why we're hearing a lot more about interfaith dialogue between the two, where they agree to put aside their differences and focus on things they have in common, like prejudice against women and homosexuals, hatred of freedom, and a pathological fear of knowledge. In other words the basics. Of course this cooperation will only go so far. There will be no churches allowed in Saudi Arabia, while mosques will continue to be built all over Europe. Are you amazed that Britain has banned our MP Geert Wilders? You banned Al Qaradawi, so why not Wilders, some people would say. I'm not in favor of banning anyone. If somebody enters the country and breaks the law they should be arrested and tried. 
If found guilty they should be deported. The British government caved into an implied threat of public disorder, and there's no honor in pretending otherwise. Again Home Secretary Jackie Smith revealed herself as someone who has been promoted above her ability, and who is completely out of her depth.